Hello everyone. This video would focus on concurrency of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. Before we go over this figure that we have right here, let's define first concurrency or point of concurrency and perpendicular bisector. We remember that point of concurrency is defined as the point of intersection of the lines, rays, or line segment. So in this case right here, this is the point of concurrency because all of these line segments are touching this point right here. While perpendicular bisector is defined as the ray, segment, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a line segment at its midpoint. So in this picture that we have here, our EC, GC, and FC are perpendicular bisectors. This means that this angle right here is 90 degrees. Another important information when it's a perpendicular bisector is that it cuts the line in or it cuts the line segment into two equal pieces. So this piece right here, AE is congruent to ED. And then again, GC is also a uh, perpendicular bisector. So then we can go ahead and um, label this with a right angle right here. And so that tells us that this AG and GB are also congruent to each other. And then we also have here, this FC is also a perpendicular bisector. That means we have DF would be congruent to that of FB. So I'm going to write that in statement up here. So what I did was I just changed these um, symbols that we have here into statements. Now I'd like you to look at this very carefully. This point of intersection that we have here, there is a special name for this. We call this as the circumcenter. So again, this is called a circumcenter. The reason why this is called a circumcenter, it's because this is a center of a circumscribed circle or a circumcircle. This circumscribed circle or circumcircle is a circle that passes through all the vertices of the triangle. So as you can see, the vertex A, D, and B are actually um, on the circle. So that's why we call this circle as the circumscribed circle or the circumcircle of this triangle. Now notice this very carefully. This segment AC segment DC and segment BC are radii of the circle. This means that AC, DC, and BC are equal each other. So then I'm just going to go ahead and add that up here. So if we have EC, GC, and FC as perpendicular bisector meeting at the circumcenter right here, which is the point of concurrency, we can go ahead and say that we have the radius AC is equal to DC, and that is also equal to BC. So I can go ahead and label that with a different color up here. So again, these are the radii of the circle and they are congruent or equal to each other. Now let's take some more examples. Now let's go over this problem right here. So in the figure FC, GC, and DC are perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABE. Point C is the circumcenter. Given that condition, since these are perpendicular bisectors, we can go ahead and label these to be equal to each other. So these two would also be congruent because it was bisected. And these two would also be congruent and it was bisected. So then we can go ahead and fill this in. Our AF would be congruent to that of FB, so this is 17. Now, we remember that since we say point C is the circumcenter, that means that is the center of the circumscribed circle or the circumcircle of the triangle. This tells us that line AC, BC, and EC are radii of the circle. 
so that we can go ahead and determine CE. Again, CE would be the same as that of BC. So this is 22 right here. And we're looking for AC as well. So AC would be the same as BC and um, CE. So this would also be 22. And then we're looking for GB. So GB is on the side right here. Since this is 15, this side would also be 15. Now we are looking for the measure of angle BFC. So BFC is a right angle because this is a perpendicular bisector. So we can go ahead and say that that is 90 degree um, angle. Now we're looking for x here. So we're given CE is 7 minus 5x. So CE is 7 minus 5x. And we know that these are the radii of the circle. So BC, AC, and EC are equal each other. And that tells us that CE is also 22. So I can put that up here, 22. So again, the, these three are equal, so I can put 22 to that, and I can put 22 also to that one. So 22 is equal to 7 minus 5x, so we wanted to solve for x, so we're going to subtract 7 from both sides, minus 7 and minus 7. So 22 minus 7 is 15 is equal to negative 5x, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 5, divide this by negative 5, so we can cross the negative 5 out. We are left with x is equal to negative 3. So the value of x that we have here would be negative 3. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!